Okay everybody, I'm going to do a quick review of the Necron Codex. It's not going to be a 5 hour video going on over every unit, just my quick thoughts on why Necron are certain units and so on. So if you think about starting Necrons or you, you have Necrons and you just want to see if everything's stronger than the Index, let's get to it shall we? Okay, let me take the Storm Lord. Once again, it has been buffed. They must have 10,000 copies of this in the warehouse because it's just causing them to sell them. Basically, awesome. 200 points is expensive. You can use my will be done twice. And he's really good. You get extra command points for having him as your warlord. He's very practical on a second tech heavy army. And if you're infantry heavy. But then you have to argue, is infantry the best way to go with second tech? Because you have other dice down there. That's personal choice. Okay, let me say a quick review. There is Andrake, same points and ability points, they kind of bother back and forth. Fog and Arboron, very powerful now, simply because all psych attack is 6 inches, you roll ones. So the Ninja Guard combo, or if you just want a Lord and kick butt, take this guy instead. Very powerful. Luminar Saris, same. Is he worth the points now? I would say maybe. Simply because the Crypt Tech is so much cheaper. Okay. Okay, the Diviner, still very powerful. I use the Sack Attack, so that comes in handy for the Wall Chest. Okay, the Traveller. Basically the same. No changes there. Still a good model to have in your army if you're really heavy. The Infinite, no special love, but he's a lot cheaper. Okay, he has my will be done, so it's not too bad, but the price makes him good. So if you love this guy, he's usable now. Command Barge. Very good. The biggest changes are with these is the Gauss Cannon. Heavy free, so it's got plus one shots and it's plus one strength. Okay, much better. Unfortunately, for some reason, you can't take the Void Scythe. Because, you know, game workshops are like, Oh, you can't go into Marines and kill Marines on a 2 plus. He has to walk across the board with 5 inch movement. That's exactly why. Because as you know, right, in this Codex, the type ball. If you watch this game workshop, you know you are because all the hate really sent me. <laughs> okay, how can you mess up with such a simple thing? Ninja Guard and Death Guard as troops. Come on. Some people are damn lazy with their cards. I'll send me this stuff and I'll do it for you, okay? I'll do it for free as well. Do a bad job for free. Okay, that sucks. Overlord. Basically the same, but you also have the option of a new weapon of the Void Scythe. Types 2 strength, beyond minus 1 to hit, so you hit or freeze, strength 10. I would say it's worth it, and there's a flat free damage, so it's much more dangerous to tanks and infantry. Because basically it's two failed sales for that, you'll kill most infantry models. You most of them have six, inch, six wounds to the characters. The Lord, extremely powerful now. They got that stupid reroll morale check for reroll ones to wounds. Very, very powerful, and it doesn't say shoot with phase. So, melee heavy armies, or shooting heavy armies, he is amazing. Okay? And the best thing is, it's an aura. So, you can daisy chain around five units in range of him, and you can buffer all of them for such low points. Okay? So, depending on the army, you might, be, you might actually be stronger than the Overlord if you're not using Tesla, just because you can buff multiple units. So, if you haven't got a Lord, you need to consider buying him if you're infantry heavy. Cryptac, extremely buffed now. The Canoptic, the Canoptic Crow, 10 inch movements. He has fly, which makes him amazing. And he can heal little metal D3 wounds. So you can keep up a race, or you can heal tags or heal characters. But one of the biggest problems with this Canoptic Crow, the base size is huge. A few games I've played now, and I've lost some two blades and destroyers, and it's been really easy for my opponent to distance himself to kill him. You kind of can't hide him in a horde. So if you play an infantry heavy list, I'd recommend not taking the cloak and just take the bare bones if you go to mortals, or if you go warriors, take the invent save. Just for the base size. You can have the cloak, he's much easier to kill. And I'm a much harder time hiding this guy in units. Okay? And he's vulnerable to snipers because he's much higher up. So buffed start wise, but model wise he's weaker, so be very careful. Destroy Lord, still absolutely useless. But if Game Workshop has made him so bad, I have found an amazing use for him. And I will go over that in a, in a Destroy Lord tactic video. 
But because he's so bad, he's actually good. So if I could get a workshop. Okay, your incompetence has been okay. Alright. Deco Warriors, Evolves, the same. These are not troops, okay? These are elites. Game okay, Workshop's just lazy. Death Rex got a bit cheaper. These got a bit cheaper, but they still have a four. So if you think this is going to go up to Riptide to kick the butts, it's not. It won't hold the ground against Demon Princess and stuff. So be very wary of these. My advice for Lich God, Grace will do their job better. Okay. That's my advice there. Flayed Ones, they've got cheaper, but they've lost they lost attack, they have the three attacks. And the uh, flesh hunger has become weaker. So these got nerfed a bit, but they are cheaper. They're not as cheap as they should be, because they've always been the price of warriors, but they're the price of the mortals now, so I'm not happy with that. I just expect that to go down to a warrior price. So you pay a more price for four plus save. It's it's okay. It's still a very good unit if you use it correctly. Check for Torians. Fluff wise, it makes perfect sense. They have got a dynasty, but they just don't, do not pack the punch that Wraiths and Lich God do. So basically, the way I would recommend using Torians is think of them as super scarabs. Basically, useless in combat, but they can tie things down for a while. That's what they are. Chuck Stalker has got buffed a little bit because he's got 2d6 of the flavor. So this is whole armies is very good. So got the real ones to hit, so depending on what dynasty you have, you can, you can use it. If not, you don't need it. Still a good thing to combo and stuff. Still a solid choice for anti tag. Oh, it doesn't have the dynasty keyword. So it can't be healed by the spider and it can't take the buffs, just so you, you know. With all the satan shards, they have been buffed, okay? You basically got the same powers as the Deceiver, but you can take two powers and use one, which makes them really good. The Nightbringer is the same, so that's good. The Wraiths have been buffed because they can leave combat and charge, okay? They can shoot and charge if they leave combat. So that makes them very dangerous. But it's not just, that's not the buff why you consider it, it's this. Two damage flat. Okay? Much, much better. And you got plus one AP. I know a lot of people saying that they don't like the new race for more points. But I've, I've had race, I send them stuff, I've had two units taken on like a squad of stuff, I just can't kill them because I can't get past an arm save. Now minus two, two damage, I kill things so much easier, faster. The Almighty Scarabs! A lot of people said to me they were nerfed until I, until I showed them they would fly. Okay? So now if you've got an objective that's six floors up, what it should be what you got it. And you can also charge flyers. And the best thing about these that makes them really good is they become scarabs of peace. Muslim scarabs. Okay? So if you need something dead that's got a few moves left, charge him and blow him up for one's a command point. The weapon skills gone down gone down to four plus, which sucks, but these were so powerful in the index. It's fair enough. For the points I think that's a good start. I, I, I think that's balanced. Maybe a little overpowered still. <laughs> okay. Two blades. Extremely powerful. The point cost has made them very viable, and in normal games, they've basically, been, they've basically been the most valuable unit I've had. Simply because they got minus one to hit. I, in unit nine, they are hard to get the plus cover save because they got infantry, so you lose the cover save ability for a minus one to hit. But when you fight armies with reroll everything, they don't get to reroll the ones to hit because the modifiers happen after the hits. So the Gurnium armies have a harder time killing these. Destroyers, start wise are the same, but the gun has got the heavy three and plus one strength. So it's a lot stronger and they are able to kill stuff now. If you watch my video up there, destroyers suck. They don't suck anymore. Okay, but just make sure you don't shoot them at multiple units. Uh, multiple wound units. Because this sounds like a problem with D3 wounds. I was really hoping that Game Workshop would give me flat two. That still annoys me. Heavy destroyers? They are still a little expensive. They, still, they are still expensive. The heavy destroyers are expensive considering what they were in 7th edition. In 7th edition, they were 50 points. They could shoot people, then they could run in high beta buildings, they could sh couldn't shoot them back. So they're 7 points more, and they're not as tough and survivable as they were in 7th because things do not damage them. But they're a lot stronger than the index, okay? I like these now because I don't mind losing free. So you need 100 odd, 170 points odd. Before it was 225, I was just 
I didn't just die like that, I'm dead. So, they be buffed just to the points. They are usable. Cup of Spiders, same thing again. If you take them in a unit, you can heal one unit of scabs per unit of spiders. So, three spiders can only heal one scabber. So, that kind of sucks. And then, I wish they made characters, not the unit ones, because they suck. Unless you hide the terrain, they'll give up first blood. So, I wouldn't recommend those. Modelf Game Workshop, why the hell is this not going to be a set? You know, not only that, right? It's so expensive, and all the things that made it good, you got to pay CP for. So, unless I take 90 extra command points, I can't use the model left. And that's if it doesn't die turn one. Still absolutely terrible, but it's such a cool looking model. That is really annoying. And then, Lation Barge, um, heavy D3 of the Gauss Carrot again, basic same start line, not much of an improvement there. Doomsday Arc, Massive improvements. Heavy D6, not D3. And that stupid rule to shoot three as a 10. Like, why the hell would you use a Doomsday Arc to shoot 10 freaking Termagons? So, somebody with half a brain cell fixed that. Good for you, but it should have been Heavy D6, flat 3. D6, D6 sucks. I would say it's a very good unit, but competitive wise, you may well look into Forge Rose or different alternatives. The Transcendent Satan. In my opinion, Every Satan has a different role. This is a, the Satan you want if you just want mortal wounds. She wants like a melee, take the knife, bring it for a surprise in the opponent's face, the deceiver. But he's much better now because you can pick one of these powers, or you can roll to have two random ones, which is completely stupid. Don't ever do that. Okay, because it happens before the battle begins, and so you can't re-roll it. So, just pick what you want. Cosmic Tyrant is brilliant because you can use two Satan powers a turn, so it makes that two to five points worth it because you get two two ways to promote wounds out of turn. Or I like to give him the plus three inbound. That's why I probably pick. So this is not a bad choice. Bill Stark's basically the same. You can heal the warriors in range. If you're playing warriors, obviously the Ghost Stark is basically necessary. Tomb Scythe. Before you hit the dislike button or whatever, right? It still sucks. And before you shout, you can take Sack Attack to make it good. That means you have to take Sack Attack. That stops energy right there. So be very careful to using this. If you take a Sack Attack, it's good, obviously, if you ignore the heavy. So it does get buffed by taking the right Dynasty. But not taking Dynasties into account with anything. Just stat wise. Night Scythe has been buffed, but the abilities that you should have. If, if, if it blows up, it should just come out or die in. It's gone. You have to pay CP for that. So, it still suffers with the same problem. That if it dies, the unit dies, that's using the command point. So, it's been buffed, but you still need to use command points to make it work. So, unless you have lots of command points, I wouldn't recommend this either. I personally would take the other dynasty and just pay the command points just to deep strike it anyway. But you can get in closer with this. The Obelisk. <sighs> I don't know why they keep giving Echo 6 pluses. Who did anything on the fly with 6 plus? Yeah. No invent save turn 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what's this bag then turn 1? Basically garbage. You can use command points to make it 4 plus and a 6 plus to do damage to anything with a fly keyword. But you have to use command points and it'll die turn 1. It's garbage. Tezrak Vault. Right, at last they decide right. Look at that. 4 plus. A Lord of War that's actually usable at last. 20 Tesla shots. 3 powers of the Satan, and those 4. So if you take this, if you take 2 of these, you can pick the same powers twice. If you rearrange what you need. But the best thing is, right, it has a dynasty keyword. But they can't benefit from the code. But they do benefit from the stratagems. So if you run this guy in a sack attack, and you can use the two command points to get plus one to hit, it's 20 Tezzas give you Tezzas on a five. So you have seven, that's very nasty. Okay. And it also makes charging this thing a bit dangerous because it's 20 Tezzas shots to the face. Okay, and the way it is now, right, the way it's modeled is it have got it does not have hovering. So in theory, if you're that guy, you can't be charged by people lights or ray fights, etc., because they can't get near your base. Which is completely stupid. So they probably add that in the FAQ. 
Okay, next one. Oh, this is just the point. The yeah, stuff. Okay. Oh, the dynasty cords. I'll go over these. I'll do these now. Let's go. Psych attack. I personally, I find this basically useless myself. But I always run a psych attack dynasty just so I can get command points back on a 5 plus. So the power is basically useless, but the wall trait is good. These are really good. Good for wraiths. Good for wraiths and shooting if you don't want to move. Good for uh, assault heavy armies if you want to run and just fly over everybody. And uh, this one. I like this with my two birds. Minus one if you're within half range. Well, like I said, it's a quick review. We're not going to go spend two hours doing the video because you can just watch anybody else listen to that. I do all these up. I do all the strategies when I get to the. Uh, I do all the strategies when I get to the data cards you do. Okay, and then I'll get back to the tactics for you then, because we all know what we want. Uh, yeah, I like that one. Times now you can snipe. You can, if you've got a low wound character, you can snipe it if you're lucky, because this happens in the movement phase, so you can target characters with these, apart from that one. Right, that's the second one I normally take, is Sky's the Fall Star. So you pick, you pick three units, and you roll what's under them. So it's perfect to win in down hordes or things like, uh, that have good armor saves. That is very good if you got a master fallen army. A every within 9 inches on a 4 plus you take more wounds. That's very good. Especially if you got Transcendent Satan and you got this one and that one going off. So you got a potential of putting six, 9 mortal wounds on the character you come up with if you're very lucky. I don't like this one because I don't like anything on 6 because I'm so unlucky. This one's good. Good for sniping. So you can snipe characters and you can snipe you just need to down with this. So, very good little, good few, there's a good few powers there. This is all the relics, I'll go for these now I suppose. Okay, <coughs> Orb of Eternity, plus one reanimation and a resurrection only one. But there's nothing in the codex that says that you can't get past the 4 plus anymore. So if you need a crypt deck and you use this, you have a free up reanimation. Okay, but it's infantry only, so you can't do it to wraiths. Okay, just so you know. Void Reaper? Flashbane. Basically, wound anything that's not a vehicle on 2 plus. Minus 4, 3 damage. Very good. The Lightning Field, 4 plus in one. That is good on a Crypt deck, but is absolutely amazing on a Catacomb Command Barge. Whenever you stack a save or Quantum Shield in, it becomes so hard to kill. Nightmare Shroud? Save characteristics, so anything that will invert save doesn't get a plus one, just so you know that one. I find this one useless because whenever you're stuck in combat, wherever you shot by stuff, it's always minus three or four, or whatever, because you want your character dead. So that is garbage. Garbage again, auto hit, but these six is to wounds, like really. And you can't even use it more than once. You know, give you a flame, but you can't use it more than once. Like, thank you. Feel of Darkness. Still one of the strongest relics we have access to. That is ah, the Nano Scarab Casket. Very good, but you can only use it to destroy a lot because it has a flattery. And you can't give it to a named character. I personally I've used this a few times, and my character either dies in one round in one round, or I don't get to use it. Okay. So I don't really like this one, but it's it's usable. This one's not bad, makes the, the characters extra toughness and extra wounds. Very good at destroy a lot. Alright, you missed that. I've tested this out now in three games. It's actually very powerful. You do more wounds if you beat the leadership. But the problem is the psych attack only. I don't really run the psych attack, I use it for the warlord. So that sucks with the psych attack, it's still a really good weapon. This one, Dylark, gives you a 5 plus feel of pain and you get to reroll one thing. Very powerful on a destroy lord if you use a destroy lord. Okay. Can you get 4 plus and 5 plus and you get a heal these 3 wounds? It becomes really hard to kill with that. This one, method only. I've used this a few times with the wall trait and it's very powerful. Assault 3, but if you use the wall trait to get an extra 6 inches and you can snipe characters with it. But it does a flat 2 damage. It's so rare for us that anything that does flat damage. You kill the wounds, you kill people so fast that. Well, the 6 plus does more wounds as well. That is a very powerful relic, that one. Blood Scythe, I don't like it. I'd rather, give, I'd rather take something else. Myself, I'd rather have the Void Reaper, and I'd rather go to the Dynasty. But there's an option if you want it. 
Solar Staff, good, but you still lock me to a dynasty here. It's not too bad that the problem it has, you might as you stop the opponent overwatching and charge them. For the next turn, the minus one hit's gone. Okay, so that's not too good. It's okay, it can be used with wraiths and so on, it can be very effective. But you basically have to make an entire army just to use it. If you get sniped on the first turn, your entire strategy is gone. It's very powerful, but maybe not. War threats. Okay. Useless. Because make minus one damage is useless. I, I never use it. I right, give you more shreds. Your warlord should not be covered with anything anyway, so that's useless. And you can't get to you cannot get to a satan. This is one of our strongest war threats. Anybody with six inches, pass morales on map, pass morale tests automatically. Okay, and you get one to nine a witch. So if you give that to a normal lord, he gives everybody a reroll and aura, and they can't fill the morale test. So that is a warrior's best friend right there. Or psychic army, take that. This one gives you plus three aura to all the aura abilities. Not bad. When I I would roll this one myself, or one of these. But that's still a good option for your Cryptex or Captain Command Bodge with longer range. You can reroll failed charge rolls within 60 million warlords. That is really good. And because the way it's worded, you can give that to the Forge character, the real killer. So you can charge after advancing and you can reroll a charge if you want. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. But that was up to debate see if he has to take the war trip, which you take. So I just. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, a bit, that's up to bit. That's up for debate until it gets FAQ'd. If your character attacks a character and use all the attacks of the character, you get these three extra attacks. Good if you combo it with a blood scythe. Okay, no, no, well, whatever one it is, gives you extra attacks. Okay, these. This is my favorite you know, of all the war traits. The more applied second. It gives you. It gives you more basically a free command point to use for himself. And if you use command point, you get 5 plus. I like this a lot. I actually build my list just to make sure I got one of these as a warlord. Okay, this is really good. You have 6 inch to all assault weapons, and you can target characters with assault weapons. Very good for sniper characters, but these are dynasty traits, so you have to build for these. This one, you always fight first, so after a charge you always go first in combat. This one's not bad. But this one to hit, so... Not too bad on a Catacom Command Barge or a Destroy Lord. Could be very nasty. Unfortunately, Satans can't take this, which is really annoying. And this one. Uh, you get an extra hit if you get six of your hits. It's like, why the sixes all the time? I would never take that. Okay, points. You, you got the points. And that's it. And I'll do a review of these as well. I'll do the data cards. So, artwork. I love the artwork, but. The fact this is 7th edition codex just shows how lazy the game workshop are. I, I actually like it, it's, it's really cool. You know, and all the other stuff in there, I don't know for that. I'm just watching the video for that. Okay, that's my review of the units, the upgrades, and why I like it the codex. Okay, so thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all again in the next video.